Welcome back to the channel. Just ate a lot of bacon. Drinking my coffee. Sun's out. Still a little chilly, but got the magnet set up for work today. We're gonna be doing a valve inspection. So we gotta take uh, quite a few things off the bike. Drain some fluids, drain gas, coolant, oil. Uh, we're going to remove the uh, alternator, left side cover, so we can see the, the stator flywheel assembly. Should have our timing marks on it. Uh, valve head covers obviously got to come off, so we got we to gotta go pretty deep. But I'm a little shy of the actual mileage, but I think after 40 years, I have no idea if anyone's ever checked it. Um, I don't think it's bad. Bike pulls well. I've never done a compression test, but I, I, I guess I haven't felt like I've needed to either. The engine seems to be strong. Revs all the way out, even after just a basic sink on the carbs when I clean them. So, I'm also going to sink the carbs after this, but there's no point in sinking the carbs if you haven't done the valves. Remember that. You always got to do the valves first before you sink the carbs. That's basically just to make sure that they're all in spec. Because um, if you're not, you might not be getting the right amount of compression. That's where a compression test could also come into play here. Probably should do it. I don't have a compression tester, so we're not going to do it today. Simple as that. But let's get to it. I'm going to throw you guys probably in a couple time lapses. Let me know if you like that down in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe, please, to the channel. Thanks so much for all the support lately. I am over 100 subscribers now, and that's pretty cool to say. So, I hope you guys continue liking the content. I'm going to continue to try and provide the best content I can. So, up in the game this one, using my SLR this time, so let me know what you think of the video. Uh, with that said, I'm going to finish this coffee, get organized for a second, and we're going to get to it. Radiator's off. Actually, it's pretty clean. Kind of surprised, but I'm going to still hose it off real nice. Uh, there's not too much damage. A few fins just a little bent over. You can tell maybe the fan was hitting it at some point or something, but I need to clean my bike too. If you can't see by the bugs. But I did find one thing. Hold on. Uh, that we need to address. I'm running over something. Um, apparently, I did not have this connector. I don't know if you, how well you can. You can I can't see that. Um, but anyway, this connector was hitting the fan. Uh, you can even pick off the little hairy bits off the back of the fan. So I'm going to have to fix the wire. It, they're exposed, but they. Uh, Looked like they were pretty close to starting to touch, but they didn't. I'll have to figure out. I don't know if I have this kind of connector on hand or not. Um, I might. 
but I'll have to look around. If I don't, I'll order one. We'll get that fixed. Um, so that's the first thing I found on the bike that was just out of the ordinary. So I'm going to now pull the valve covers off, raise the tank up so I can get to the rear one, uh, pull spark plug caps off. Um, the manual said it doesn't say anything about removing them. So I'm going to take off the alternator cover so I can get at the bolt and see my timing marks on here. Um, take off my side panel here. I think i got to get to the markings like over here, I think. Um, haven't done this before, so we're learning together. But those are the next steps. Get those exposed. Then we can kind of talk about the actual inspection itself, kind of the process of what we're doing there, and what we want to look for specifically on these bikes. Um, you got to use two feeler gauges, but we'll get to that. So it looks like might be having a little leak. You can't see the other one, a little lower. Boop. Um, might have to order the, there's like a little seal under there from what I understand. So just wanted to show you guys that. All right guys. We are inside and just looking at everything. Honestly, it looks very good. Um, very clean. Um, sorry, um, first time I've been in here. Uh, do note the gasket. Oh, I'm really close. Um, sorry, the gasket for the valve head cover um, did break. I'm guessing it was original though to the bike. So, I already had those on order though. Um, they're here. I don't have to worry about that. I believe there's two on the back and one on the front. So just um, remember that. Also, uh, Instagramception going on here for a second. Cool. Thank you for being a part of that. So, I'm going to now get the gas tank put up. Open up the... Uh, probably should have done this in a different order. But uh, open up the rear one and uh, get the side cover off. Well, sorry. I got into a working mood there because I found out I needed to remove a number of other things and I kind of just did it. So to catch you up a little bit, obviously the gas tank is off. Um, normally right here is the caps, spark plug wires go off it's everywhere because it's four cylinders. Um, so now I'm just trying to get all this plastic piece out of the way to get the rear valve cover off. Uh, the bolts are conveniently located underneath everything. So remember that. Um, yeah, so just to catch you up on that, it's probably easiest to remove the whole gas tank and then take the caps off which I had to take the snorkel out for the air box I'm gonna check the air filter it looks great um, I'll let you know if I find anything else that uh, we gotta take out but there's a plastic piece under here like it's called like the heat shield or something like that so I just had to take off the gas tank um, and hopefully now it'll be a lot easier to get this stuff out of my way so, I'll be back. Alright. Finally got that out. That took some gymnastics. It's going to be really hard to show you exactly what I did, but essentially it had, there's a two-piece valve cover here. The two pieces, first one was fairly easy to get off. The second one, you kind of had to come out and like turn it out of the bike. I'll try to show you as I'm going back in, because that's going to be a trick as well. But let me get this cover off. I don't think there really should be much oil or anything behind it. We got our alternator cover off. Flywheel. Stator cover. Um, T24. So right now we're at T1. It says. Okay. So. 
there's these marks on the flywheel that will tell us when we're at the right spot in the motor timing to check the valves. Checking the valves, I'll once again show you here a little closer as best I can. You're going to be inserting feeler gauges in between the valves and the followers or the springs. And basically that's where it's pushing the valve down and we want to know what that space is. We just want to make sure that it's proper, that it is not expanded, it's not too tight, anything like that. In the last 40 years, who knows what's happened. I don't know if anyone's been in here before. Once again, looking at everything, despite all the cam myth and everything that everyone likes to talk about, these cams are looking dang good to me. So I'm not too worried about condition at this point. Everything feels tight. Um, so, I am not too worried at this point in terms of the condition of inside the valve train. Yeah, that's the word. Valve train. So, I'm going to do my best here. Run through the timing. Um, I'm going to take a look at the seals and the valve head covers, see if I can throw this all back together today, at least to the point so it's covered again. Um, let's hope getting through the valve adjustment. I'll probably only show you one or two of them just to check. To, I'll run through them all on my own. I want to check to see where they are first and then I'm going to adjust them. I'm not going to just adjust them. Um, I really want to know where they're at. So I'm going to test them to see if they are out of spec first. Anyway, I'll show you that. Let me get cleaned up a little bit after I got all that apart. Uh, I'll let this oil drip. Just a little bit of oil in there. I think that's pretty normal. Um, there's not supposed to be a ton in there, but I think a little bit is expected. So, been told like this. This is a gasket should be able just to be be reused. Blech, I can talk, and I think we will do so. So, let's get to this valve inspection. Seventeen millimeter. So I got T one three. All right, I have this one in a good spot to show you right now. Also just looking at uh, cams look actually pretty clean considering. So these are the feeler gauges, these little strips of metal. And it's easier to see on this back one. But you can see it's going in between this valve spring and this guy here. And that's giving you that little clearance. And that's what we're checking. So I'm using two so one is in each at the same time. And right now the point oh oh five inch one is in there in both and I cannot fit a point oh oh six one in either so this is in spec we don't need to touch it it's ready to go we can move on to the next set of valves but this is the concept that we're going for this is what this whole video has brought us towards is checking this on every single set of valves this is an exhaust valve um, I'm going to just double check my specs. I think you should as well, considering these are different years. You know, who knows what the specs could be. I know right now off the top of my head it's .005 inches for this year, 83 Magnus. But double check in your service manual. Um, you want to use two sets. That's what people recommend. That's what they were doing back in the 80s. So I'm going to do the same thing. Mind you, I couldn't fit a six in either even without the second set of feeler gauges in there. So I'm going to continue going through this. If I find any that are not in adjustment or out sorry out of spec I'll bring you guys back in show you what I'm going to do to adjust those but just to talk about it really quick basically you see that there's a like a flat head here and then there's a nut this is a jam nut you break it loose this is an adjuster that goes in and out 
So then you can put your feeler gauge underneath in between the two. Crack this loose. Adjust this down till the feeler gauge is just dragging slightly on it. You want to have a little bit of drag in between the two. Tighten your nut and you're adjusted. So let's hope that they're all in adjustment. We don't have to do anything. Just going to make sure nothing looks loose. Everything looks in good condition. And like I said, if we find anything we need to show you, we will. And then I'm going to work on uh, putting it back together. Okay. Sorry. Alright. We're now in the right and proper place. Time this one. 05 is not fitting. So, I'm going to get my 10 mil in here. Let's see if I can sneak my other tool in there. It's probably not the. They're kind of tight, but that's on purpose. Alright, so that's just as loose. I'm going to kind of show you the concept here. It's going to be hard for me to show you, if, especially if I keep bumping you, um, precisely. So basically, I'm going to back this off. I want to get my five in there. I'm gonna kind of bring it down, and like now I can't pull it out. So I'm gonna back it off a little bit. Like there, I can't pull it. Like there, I can pull it. So that's where I want that to be. Right. So sorry, sorry, this is awkward to do while trying to film. So I'm gonna hold it in place. Make sure that's nice and tight and a five fits nice. We want to get that this one. Sometimes it's easier to use my little screwdriver. Throw it back that one. 005. So it fits. I'm going to just kind of screw it on. Can't move it. I can move it. Kind of keep it there. Difficult to. Oh, I keep bumping you. I'm sorry. So, five is good in there. Just to double check, I can still fit a five on the other side. I can. Ooh. on that one just to make sure six does not go in so those two now are properly adjusted but you want to basically now you can actually see there's a little you can hear maybe you can that there is a little play because the cam now, so the lobe, you know, it looks like an egg. Easter's coming up, kind of looks like an egg. So when the top of the egg is hitting in the middle here, it then pushes down both fouls. And then when it gets off the egg, right now, that's when you have that little bit of gap. And you can hear that, maybe. But that's what we're checking, is that little gap. 
when it's off the top of the egg, it's at the bottom of the egg where it's a lot more just circular. The top of the cam start moving. You should see valves going up and down. We're gonna go to the two four mark. All right, that's how you adjust those. Hopefully that kind of explained to you how the cam system works. I'm going to bust out the rest of these valves and then uh, get back to it. All right. All the valves are now in spec. 005 fits, 006 does not. We are good to go. Uh, I am going to reassemble the bike and get this thing back together. Thank you so much for watching this video right now. Um, I'm going to have some more videos coming soon, but like, comment, subscribe. Take this on. Uh, it's taken me most of the day to get it done, but I'm also filming. I'm also trying to like make sure I'm saying the right words to you guys and things like that. So if I miss anything, feel like I need to explain on anything, let me know. Um, going to have a few more things to do. Might have to order a couple parts here and wait till the bike's on the road anyway. So I might not be putting it totally back together just in case. But let me know what you think in the comments. 